Thank you, Les, and good morning. Um, yeah, I would like to, I'd like to give an update on, on what's happening in the work group and um, and also a bit of, of context to why have we joined the work groups, what is it we would like to, to achieve, and, and linking into what Les was talking about, the, the model that we have, are we really effective in getting things implemented and embedded into the organizations? And we have some thoughts of how we can be more inclusive and hopefully can have a larger impact on, on the industry. So I, I would like to start by broadening it out a bit and maybe ask you to reflect on what is really the purpose of step change? Why are you here today? What do you expect to get out of it? And to me, that's very much what I have up there. Uh, it's, it's the focus of, uh, let's say, best practice. How do, we, how do we embed, how do we share best practice, and how do we ensure that it's effective in our organizations? When you think about your organizations and all the toolkits that uh, Les was talking about, is it really embedded? Is it really being used? Are we really having the impact across our organizations that we would like to have? Is it getting all the way to the front line? Is it being used by our supervisors, etc.? And I think hand on heart, certainly I would say it's, it's not as effective in my organization as I would like it to be. And, and I'm sure we can share that view. So let me start by being a bit theoretical and, and say what is it when we talk about best practice in embedding? If you look it up in the Oxford Dictionary, this is the definition that, that you get of the two. So really, best practice is about what is the accepted, what's, what's the standard, what is it to aim for, what's the correct or most effective version of what we do. So that comes through in our procedures, sharing best practices, comes through in our trainings, comes through in the toolkits that we develop. It's about finding the pieces where we as an industry have the best practices and try to share that across our industry. Um, it's also about uh, skills and competence. So it's really about how do we, do we develop the competence in our organization. And when we look at the definition for embedding, fix firmly and deeply in the surroundings. And that comes back to my, my reflection at the beginning. Can we really hand on heart say that we are embedding best practices effectively in our organizations? And I think that that's one of our biggest challenges and probably one of the biggest barriers that, that we face. And I think uh, Les will give us a, a case talking about the unwanted gifts uh, when I'm done here. And I think that is certainly cause for reflection. What's preventing us? What are the barriers that we face in being really effectful and powerful in implementing the tools and the behaviors we want in the organizations? So there's a significant human factors angle to that. And that really puts down the point to me that human factors and competence, they are explicitly uh, linked and go hand in hand. So that, that's part of the background for, for the merge of the two groups. And the focus, as you can see on, on the slide there, the focus from the competency group, steering group, has really been initially with the launch in 2012 of the mechanical joint integrity work. Uh, and the guidance of that, and I'm, I'm very pleased to, to say that that's being used now by I think more than 6,000 people have been through the training. More than 150 companies are using that toolkit and that guidance. Not only here in the UK, in the North Sea sector, but globally across our industry worldwide. So I think that is fantastic success. And then the focus is really, and I'll get a bit more in, into detail on where we are, on the MIST review, the, the minimum industry safety training that we have across uh, certainly our industry here in the UK, uh, lifting and handling guidelines and uh, standard framework, which is really the competency framework uh, for the industry, and I'll talk more about that in, in a minute. On the human factors, the focus was initially on what was called the first step uh, and, and Dave will, will talk more about that, but that was launched in 2010 and that was really trying to put more, let's say, emphasis about what is human factors, how does it impact the decisions we make and how does it impact uh, in, in our organizations through the learnings and incidents that, that we see. So there's quite a lot of case studies being used for sharing that. And now the toolkit is sort of the next step of, of how do we embed this more powerfully into our organization. And it's uh, human factors, as we all know, it goes through everything that we do from design, uh, from our standards, but also through how we adopt uh, behaviors and changes in, in our organization. So you can say human factors is really in, in all elements of what we do to drive safety performance. Um, and one of the things we try to focus on with the merge of the, the group's competence in, in human factors 
is of course also to ensure that in all the other groups that are running on the step change that we have human factors experts such that we can get the human factors element embedded into the guidance, the standards and the conversations that we have in all the groups, all the working groups. So back in August, uh, when we had the, the last event on human factors and, and competence, we sort of ran it as two separate groups. We merged now, as, as I said, this is the scope that we are currently working on, as I mentioned before. And the focus for us have really been, let's, let's define an umbrella of what we want to achieve, but let's ensure that we don't lose momentum, we don't lose traction on all the ongoing work streams. We want to deliver what we have committed uh, to deliver. So that's basically what's up there in, in dark blue. And you'll also see that, that the co-chairs uh, in, in the merge group are myself and, and Dave Stewart. And it's fine that it's our names up there, but it's really not us doing the work. And this comes really down to the buy-in that, that we see across the organization and why we are, we are all here, I guess. It's really all the people, all the experts we have embedded in the working groups that drive this work. And it's voluntary work. It's people that are really passionate, really dedicated to move our industry forward. Put a lot of effort into this, really, with strong support from the Step Change team. So I think it's a very, very powerful model as such. But merging the two groups have also for us shown uh, some challenges. First of all, right now we have ended up with a merged steering group of 20 plus people. And of course, I think we can all realize that that's not really uh, a way that we can run an effective uh, steering group. So we had a lot of thoughts about the delivery model, as I mentioned before, and say, how can we become more effective? How can we become more effective at putting more empowerment into the work groups that really drives the work streams and then try to, to slim down um, our, uh, what do we say, the management parts? So we're trying to look for a new model, uh, a model where we can be more engaging, more engaging of the increasing number of step change members that we have. Um, we have, how many do we have now? 135 uh, members, right? So it's quite a lot of companies and a lot of people. If I look under each of the work streams, we have a working group. So there's a lot of people engaged there, and then we have the steering group. So how can we become more inclusive, really, of, of ensuring that the full membership and all our people from offshore, onshore, uh, have a say in what is really important for our industry, what is it we want to drive. So we would like to have a less of a top-down approach. But at the same time, one, once we get out with guidance and, uh, and toolkits, etc., how do we ensure that the take-up is, is uh, there? So we have uh, come up with this model, and it is uh, slightly complicated. I will try to explain it. But it really builds on the, last, uh, the lower triangle is the planning process. So instead of having just the step change leadership planning day, we would like to have a more broad and inclusive planning, uh, yearly planning exercise, where we are looking at more engagement from the membership companies, where we are certainly looking to include all the members we have in the work groups uh, across uh, our, our teams, and where we have a cascading discussion, and it will start today with some of the sessions that, uh, that Les uh, talked about. And then we'll run a, a wider planning day in September for, for our competence and human factor steering group, where we will discuss what is really the issues, what are our challenges, what are our roadblocks in, in the industry. And we'll, of course, put some framing around that. So the idea is that the planning process can be more inclusive and as we then go up, then uh, myself and uh, Steve or Dave can take into the step change leadership planning day, it aligned with all the other working groups into the discussion and say what's most important, where do we get most impact, what are the biggest challenges in our industry. And once we have then defined the priorities, we sort of reverse it, we define the work streams and then we hope by having more engagement, we can also be more transparent about the things we're working on and ensuring as we roll out toolkits through events like this, that we can have a larger impact uh, throughout the organization. So that, that's the model that we're trying to adopt and, and we'll run it with, uh, with the competence and human factor steering group as, as, a first, uh, as a first pilot, I guess. So again, it should drive hopefully more engagement, uh, more buy-in to the things we are working on in the, in the step change teams. And, uh, and certainly, hopefully, it will help also with more knowledge about what's happening and, and thereby supporting the in embedding process. The work model that, that we have used, uh, and, and I presented this before in the competence uh, discussions, 
is really about what we call the onion. So it focuses at, at the core, uh, really about the foundation program. So for us, it's, it's the minimum industry safety training standards, it's both yet, which is really core to what will it safe to work safely offshore. And then you could say we have more core skills around it. We talk about safety leadership, golden rules. Those are some of the things we would like to look more on. Golden rules we have actually adapted into the, the mist training. And then you can talk about safety critical roles and tasks. That's sort of the next layer. We talked about mechanical joint integrity. We're looking at lifting standards, controller work. So there are other elements we would really like to address as we move forward. And then you can say the competence framework that surrounds us is really the guiding principles of, uh, of what we do. So let me just give you a brief update on, uh, on the current ongoings. I think uh, what we've talked most about probably uh, historically is the standard framework for competency. Because we don't have a standard. We don't have a, a defined set of terminology for our industry. Each company has their own uh, sets. Some don't really have a, a strong system in place. So this is a new piece of guidance that's being worked. And it's really aiming to drive a common terminology across our industry of what it means to be competent. So it's fairly high level, it's non-prescriptive, uh, and it's really aimed at, at management to help standardize competence uh, for, for our industry. Uh, we aim to publish this uh, in third quarter. It's almost there. We're just going through the last iterations. It's basically going to be a four-stage model uh, to competence assurance. And then part of it's also give a framework for competence management that can be adopted in, uh, in companies. So again, the aim is not to be very prescriptive, but to provide a framework that we can all work to and hopefully drive some common standardization in terms of, of how we discuss and define uh, competence for our industry. The second one is, uh, is lifting, uh, which is ongoing. So that's the lifting group, and they are basically rereading the, the lifting and mechanical handling guidance for I think it's the fourth time coming through and now it introduces also an element around uh, risk assessment which is one of the biggest challenges we have seen in, in recent incidents. Uh, we have ensured that we have human factors again inputs and, and human factors experts are, are looking through the documents and we expect the final version to be available uh, within the next month or two to, to come out. And then the group will work on and line up with a P2 and work on the standards review in, in third quarter. On the next stream on MIST, we talked about MIST. MIST is probably the thing that, that have had most emotions uh, in, involved in it. We have shared previously last year in some sessions a lot of statistics. There's a lot of knowledge from the current uh, participants that have been through the MIST training and there's been a lot of feedback that has gone into the review uh, that we have now. So it's really been reviewing the standard for MIST uh, and it's trying to re review the full standards and try to make it much more crisp and hopefully much more user friendly. So it's been cut down from nine modules to six modules. It's been more focused. Uh, it focuses much more on major accident hazards. Uh, we have included some of the golden rules, which to some degree is embedded in most companies across the industry, though called uh, different things. Um, and also there's been a lot of focus on trying to be much more interactive uh, and, and provide a, a better user experience uh, for, for our people going through the training. So that's almost there. I think uh, the, the review is, is close to complete and uh, Opito is now looking to implement this in the fourth quarter this year. So it's a really good to see progress and, and that one closed out. And I had a slide more in, the, in my pack here, but <laughs> I don't in, uh, in this one I can see. So, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, last part I, I would like to just throw up on, uh, on the table and maybe that can be a bit of inspiration for, for the working sessions this afternoon. Are some of the considerations that, uh, that we have been through and talked about in the steering group, what we would like to focus on next time. Uh, clearly, that there's a feeling that safety leadership is, is a thing that we should address. There's a lot of human factors and competence behavioral elements linked into that, and we would like to do something in that arena. We don't know exactly what it should look like, so any feedback would be uh, absolutely welcomed. Uh, we're focused on the joined up uh, thinking, so again, 
very important in our planning process that we ensure that our work program is really aligned with the other, uh, the other work groups and, and the full step change programs. Uh, we talked about uh, competence standards for safety practitioners. That there really isn't anything well defined out there at, at this point in time. Safety critical roles, TAs, how do we ensure competence for our technical authorities uh, throughout uh, the, the industry. There have been some focus and challenges still around confined space, um, lifting competence for non-lifting non personnel. And some discussion about safety passports. It's a, and it, Advantage is a very, very powerful tool for our industry. It, it works very well in terms of ensuring that, that things are aligned across uh, operators, etc. But can we take more, can we get more advantage out of that? It's an opportunity to have more courses, etc. locked onto the Vantage system to, to drive, uh, again, a, a common approach across the industry. So those are some of the thoughts we discussed in, uh, in the steering group. These are the things we will feed in to the planning session. Uh, I put it up here for some consideration, hopefully during the working sessions and some discussions, and, and we're really, really keen to get uh, your inputs in, into that. We'll come back to this again based on the framework of the model in September when we do uh, the, the planning date for, for our group. And one more element that, that's very important uh, for us is, of course, that we also align this with the HSE uh, strategy. So the HSE have defined a new strategy uh, for, for their focus and their elements based on a lot of analysis on where the challenges are in our industry and where we need to drive it. There's a lot of value in us aligning with some of that work, so we'll make sure that that goes into our planning considerations as well. So that was really what, what I wanted to say, hopefully give you a bit of a flavor of what's coming. There's a lot of things happening, we're seeing good progress and, and we will deliver these uh, commitments we made throughout uh, the year this year. And hopefully with our buy-in we can take that away and really have a profound impact in, in our organizations. So thank you very much and back to Les.